Hi everyone, welcome back. I'm Jackie from Wacky Jackies. Okay, so now we've got all of the top of the quilt together, which is the sec center part of that quilt. I've put it all together. Just a couple of pointers when I was putting it together. Um, this particular block here, which is the four um, squares, and up here, you can see them here, um, or here, there's four of them. Now, what I did do was I actually took particular care in putting the red, the colours in the same position. So basically, they, they mirrored. So you can see I've got the two reds, the two blacks, the two greys and the two reds. Same with down the bottom there. So just take a little bit of care if you, if you want to. I thought it would be nice to have it all done properly and all in the right positions and mirroring, mirroring, mirroring the, um, the, each side. All right, so now the next step for this is to put our two borders on on the outside. So what I'll do is I'll just put this away for a minute and then we'll cut the borders and sew them on. All right. So the first border is the red border. Um, so we're going to make sure that you iron your fabric. As beginners, you can see the difference. This is ironed, this is not ironed. So make sure you iron it properly so you get really clean cuts and everything's precise because when you're beginning you really need to get take on from the very beginning that everything needs to be accurate. If it's accurate, so accurately ironed, accurately cut, accurately sewn, it'll all go together into a really nice puzzle. So I've ironed half of that, I'll just see I'll iron the other half, get a nice hot iron. Now you can see that some of this fabric has not lined up, but it's actually sitting quite straight. When they put it onto the bolt, um, they're pretty precise with putting on the bolt on basically so it's not it's folded properly and it's folded on the grain rather than um, having some sort of uh, bias cut. You're going to get straight cut. A bias cut is fabric. Say this is a piece of fabric. When you stretch it like this, it won't stretch. But if you stretch like that, you'll get a slight stretch. So you're going to get a bit of a wonky, a wonky finish. But this is um, all pretty, pretty um, straight on the on the bolt. We find that our supplier seems to be really good with putting fabric onto the bolt. So we're going to double it over like that. This is another tip. It's always good to double it over because you haven't got as big a cut. Like when you cut, and if you've got a really long, for example, if you've got a really wide bit like this, you'd have a bigger board, of course, if you're going to cut it across like that. To have a long ruler, it's actually a long way to keep that ruler straight. So you can have a few, you can get a few mistakes. So I find cut it in four. If you've ironed it nicely and it's on the straight, you're going to get a nice cut. Good press. Now, as you can see here, there's all sort of excess bits and pieces. So we're going to be cutting that off. But when I cut my fabric, it's, you don't have to, but when I cut my fabric, rather than cutting that bit off first and then turning it over, I basically cut it with that extra bit. So if I need a three inch, for example, if I need a three inch, I'd make sure that my three inch is taking into account all of that extra bit that I've got to take it cut off. So basically you'd have, you know, three, a three, probably three and a quarter or three and a half so that you can cut, turn it around and cut the rest off there. Now using these boards, uh, people, you, people seem to think it's okay to use the boards, but the boards aren't actually, don't necessarily, uh, aren't printed properly. So always use your ruler. You can use this to kind of line up, get a bit of a straight on the, 
on your um, board if you like, but I always use my ruler. Now I'll just find my rotary cutter and how much I have to cut. Okay, so uh, as per my instructions here, I've got to cut five two and a half inch strips with the fabric, like with the fabric is from selvage to selvage. So the selvage is in, from one side to other, I've folded it over once and then folded it twice. Um, okay, so I've got to two and a half inch strips and five strips. So as I said, because there's that excess there, all little kind of daggy bits that you want to cut off, two and a half, I'm going to go about, well, this works out to be about two and three quarters. Line your, one of your lines up along the bottom, make sure it's nice and straight, hold it down tight and cut. Then I'm going to turn this around and I'm going to cut all those excess bits off there. So two and a half, line the two and a half inch line on your board, on your ruler and then cut. Whoops, okay, that's a perfect example. Now, always good to pull your fabric away from your ruler, not your ruler away from your fabric. So I, was a I jumped ahead and pulled my ruler away and I should have pulled my fabric. So I'm straightening up that fabric just so you can get it on that line again, because it does move around a bit. Get it on the two and a half inch line, nice and straight and then take it back there and cut again. It's because I'm in a bit of an odd position here. Right, that's one. Once again, lining up your, one of your lines along the bottom of your fabric, so that's two. Three, four, five. Now this is, um, Oh yes, this is used for the binding too, so that's why we've got a bit of that left over. I'm just going to fold that away for the binding. And then I'm going to add, as it says in my pattern, I'm going to add these together. Now I have a particular way I like to do my um, borders, uh, my, sorry, putting long strips like this together. I like to put them together in a particular way rather than just sewing these two together like this. No, I don't like doing that. I like to get a nicer finish. So what you're looking at doing is right sides together. So I've just turned that up so it's the right side. So the outside of your fabric is the right side. If it's on the bolt, the outside of your fabric is the right side, generally. So this is the outside of the fabric. That's the way it's come off the bolt. So this is going to be the right side. With batiks, you don't really uh, there's a lot of them, you can't tell the difference. So it doesn't matter if you do make a mistake with these sort of plain batics. And what I do is I just grab my little square and then you put this 45 degree angle down this um, cut on the fabric and you, and you put the corner up onto the into the corner here and put that down there and then you draw a 45 degree angle line with your chalk pen. Right, and then you put this on the top of that, so right sides together, these are all going to be right sides together and just put a couple of pins in there just to keep, keep it nice and straight and you don't, it's not going to go wonky. Right. 
and then I'm going to sew it from corner to corner. Just take it steady. Alright, so then if you see, mm, well see that's not very good. <laughs> <laughs> so everybody makes mistakes. So what I, what happened was, if you come in close for that, Douglas, I didn't I didn't I didn't uh, make sure that that actually was lined up there. So I'm going to un quickly unpick it. All right. So I've unpicked that, and I'm going to put this on. Here again. So, okay, you need to line, make sure that that side of that there, that of this particular one, this strip, goes along the edge of that selvage. Because what I did, did just then was I didn't line it up and I got a not so good finish. So, it's good to see that, you know, for you to see that other people make mistakes and it's not unusual and uh, yeah, we're not perfect. Even though some of us think we are. <laughs> but anyway, um, let me just get this organised. Right. So this again. Let's hope this comes out better. Okay, there you are. So like a straight, the, the both edges are all lining up. Sew and line. So you're cutting off the excess fabric and leaving a quarter inch seam. All right, so that's how you do it. And then you iron that out. Now I'm just going to go and finish that all off and then I'll come back to you. Okay, so we've got them all together. We've put all these five strips together. Two and a half using that little technique I just showed you. So I'm just going to put that aside on the uh, ironing board. And what I want to go through is uh, measuring up your quilt to make sure that you've got the right um, length border. Please don't just think it's okay to get, take this big long strip and start sewing it on and then cut it off at the end. You know, like basically you'd, some people would just um, sew that on and get to the end and cut it off. You might get a bit, it might get a bit wonky or skew if. So really, you're better off to take the time and measure your quilt. Now the first borders, as per my instruction, it says two by 48 and a half inch side borders. So the side, this is the side. They're the side borders. So I want to put those ones on first and then I'm going to put the, sec the bottom and top on uh, second. So basically I've got to work out how long I want the side borders. So these are the side borders. I can turn the quilt so I'll measure the borders. So what I want to do is I want to, because we want that, that um, border to be going on there, we want to measure what, how long that is. So I've got 48 there and on my um, instructions I put 48 and a half so just take two uh, three or four little spots make sure that you've got it all flat through your quilt and just make sure that it is 48 and a quarter so that's 48 so it's not so I'm proving myself wrong um, so it depends if you if you use yeah, that's 48. If you use a, um, you know, sometimes different machines, you get a different quarter inch 
seam as long as they're all go they're all the same seam it doesn't matter it all goes that's at 48 and a quarter so there you go I've got three 48s and three one 48 and a quarter but I'm going to go 48 because the majority of them are 48 so go with the majority so I'm going to cut two 48 inch strips out of this um, out of here, out of these. I'll move this board across. And I need to go wrong way. I need to <laughs> measure out 48 inches. So get your your measuring tape. These two metre ones are perfect. I think it's a two metre. It's either two or two and a half. No, it's, it's actually a three metre. Um, these are really good. They're a good size, a good length. Um, you can, you know, most quilts, you won't get quilts bigger than three metres. Well, you might, but geez, they'll be awfully big. So measure it out. Um, always remember, measure twice, cut once. Um, 48 inches. Get my little board, put the board over the top of it, measure twice, cut once. Make sure your line, uh, one of your lines on your board underneath the actual cut line there on that border so that you've got a nice straight line when you're cutting it. Double check it again. Okay, one, and I'll pull that across and get the next one. line underneath the bottom of the fabric, 48, measure twice, okay so I've got those, I'm going to put this aside and this is for your top and bottom border, I'll put those aside and then we'll measure the top and bottom so that we get the right size with those two. All right, put that away. And we're going to sew these on. Sew these borders on. The two side borders. Don't need that anymore. Okay, they're the side borders. So pin them on first so that you're getting a nice um, finish. And I always pin it at the end and at the other end and then ease it in. Or, sorry, no, a good way to do it, I should teach you the way I was originally taught, get, find the middle of the quilt. So it's this line here. Basically, it's that seam there. We'll put a, a pin in there so we don't forget it. Find the middle of this. And just finger press it. And then put that on the middle there. So the, middle, the finger press seam over the top of that seam. And then just put that pin in there. And then put it on the end here pin it on the end and then ease it in so that it all sits nice and flat. Lining up all the edges so you get a nice 
finish and a, the, the width of the border is the same way all the way through. So then just pin this other end, lining up the ends, the side of the border and the side of the quilt. And pin that up. Just checking that it's all eased in. Right. Now put the one on the other side, put the other border on. So we know that's the middle seam. No, that's the middle seam. <laughs> um, make sure it's right sides together. Just fingerprint, uh, finger press that the middle seam there that goes on to here. See, I'm having to ease that in a little bit there because this might be the one, the side that was 48 and a quarter, but we don't want one border at 48 and a quarter and one border at 48. We want both at 48 so that you get a nice square quilt. It's... I believe quite important that you have square quilts and everything's um, nice and flat because if you want to take it to a quilter, um, which costs money, but you get a nice finish, um, the quilters, if they've got to do any work on it, they're going to, ha they're going to charge you money on, good money too, um, to do it. And quite rightly so, they're fixing up your mistakes. So get it. Get it right, try and get it right right from the very beginning and then you get this lovely finish when it's all quilted. Otherwise you'll get, you know, you might get bubbles in it or, uh, or as, as I said, the quilter might end up doing quite a bit of work on it and have to charge you for doing that. All right, so now I'm gonna sew these on, put the trusty glasses on. and making sure that you have a quarter inch foot on, stitch length 1.8, and then we're gonna sew it. All right, so you're sewing up to your Just make sure if you if you if you under if your quilt centre has shifted a little bit, just make sure that you line it up with your border edge so that you're getting a good finish. Okay, so now I've got those two sides on, side border on, and I'll just um, uh, iron them out. Get them nice and flat so that when we measure it up, we're going to get the precise measuring. Measurement, sorry, not measuring. <laughs> All right, so I've ironed those both out. And now, because I want to get the right length for the top and bottom border, I need to measure three times minimum across the width of the fabric, or oh, width of the quilt. So I'll just move this over. So either end and in the middle, minimum. So this one is 51 and three quarters. Just make sure that it's all stretched out nicely. 
don't make, don't stretch it out. So I'm, I'd say 52. 52. Yeah, 52. Through the middle. Fifty-two. And at the end. At the other end, sorry. Fifty-two. So okay, we're gonna cut two at fifty-two. Um, and put those on the top and bottom. I'll come back to you when I've done that. Okay, so now I've got my top and bottom on, uh, borders on, and I need to cut the next border, which is the second border. So this is the centre, this is the first border, and I'm just about to do the second border. So I've ironed up my black fabric for the second border, and I'm, as per my instructions, it says to cut six strips width of fabric at five and a half inches. So I have my lovely back fabric here and I need to, where is my board? There's my board. Cut six at five and a half inches. So once again, I've got a little bit extra over the edge here. When I, due to when I ironed it and I needed it to be nice and straight. So you've got the little bits, daggy bits at the end. So I'm just gonna cut it about five and three quarters. And then I'll turn this one around and cut it back to five and a half. You can see the little bits of extras there, five and a half. Line that line a line up along the bottom of it so you get a straight cut and that's that that's one two three Four, five, six. Okay, so I'm going to do that. And you remember I showed you in that first video, um, you with your right sides together you do the 45 degree angle across here so you get that really nice finish rather than just having a straight line across the border you get a, a, a diagonal line it looks really nice yeah that's the, that's the right side so I'm going to draw that line on the back so you get your 45 degree angle you'll need a bigger board with this one I can use this one here and my chalk pencil so you put the 45 degree angle down the actual side of the border, the side of the cut side of the border fabric and the point right in the corner there. Yes, there is a bit of wastage of fabric for this, but it does look nicer. My opinion is you don't have to, you can just sew it across there. And I have done that at times when I've been a bit short with fabric. So I'm just gonna go through, sew all those together and then I'll come back. Okay, so I've got all my borders, my second border all sewn together with the 45 degree angle seams and I've, I've ironed them all down, ironed all the seams down. So now we need to check this again, check that you're going to get the right size border, right length border. You don't want to, once again, sew it onto the side and then find that you've got a skew with kind of quilt. So we're going to... Uh, Measure it three times, 52. So, sorry, I'll go take a step back. Because we put the side borders on first and then the top and bottom, we want to do the same for the second 
border. Okay, so we're going to put the sides on first. So we're measuring the sides. So 52. Fifty-two, that's a little bit less than fifty-two. I can get fifty-two out of that. We'll check through the middle. Make sure you're getting everything flat. Fifty-two, and so I'm going to make this fifty-two. It looks, it's looking like it's fifty-two. Yep, 52. So I'm going to cut two black borders for the top uh, of the two sides and I'm going to sew those on and come back and measure it for the other two top and bottom borders. So I'll be back in a minute. Okay, so I've got the side border sewn on and I need to get the right, the correct measurement for the top and bottom border. So I'll, I know I sound like a broken record, but check three times through your quilt top to see what your measurement is. 62 for that. We'll go through the middle. Sixty-two, just under sixty-two for that one, for the middle one. And the bottom I'd say would be sixty-two. Got limited space here. Sixty-two. Okay, so we're going to cut the top and bottom border at sixty-two, and um, add them to the bottom, and then I'll come back and show you the finished product. Okay, so now we've got our last border on, and it's all finished. You've finished the top. Congratulations. Um, okay, so you can take it to your quilter, or you can attempt to quilt it yourself. I'm not going to go through that step. I had this one done just in a stipple. I've got a friend, her name's Shirley Deacon. Um, she does a beautiful ship, uh, stipple and she does it at a nice price so it's not so expensive. Um, yeah, and then basically when you've finished putting it all together, um, you would then cut your, what's the remaining of your, the remainder of your um, red fabric and put on your binding. If you are interested in purchasing any of this, go to our website, www.wackyjackies.com.au. Oh, sorry, no, just wackyjackies.com. Um, and we can send everything to you, to you including the little um, pattern. Um, and yeah, like, so if you've got any questions, just put them on the YouTube and, and ask in the questions or put comments. We love to hear from you. It's really nice to hear from you. And that concludes our layer cake quiz beginner's quilt. Very easy quilt to do. And we'll be coming along with some more stuff in the future. So stay tuned on our, subscribe onto our uh, YouTube channel and stay tuned for our new stuff. Thank you very much for joining us. Mm -hmm.